Hello and welcome to Unit 7, Bring Student Work Online, and um, this unit uh, in particular focuses on Google Classroom. Now I just want to say something here. Um, for the 2018-2019 school year, Google Classroom has been updated, and it's a little bit different. Now I had um, just finished this this um, this whole unit, uh, you know, and um, the next day they update the product. So I actually went back and, and I updated. So so this is good for the uh, you know this is good for uh, you know two th 2019 and everything. So this is the most up to date. Trust me, I just did it a couple days ago. So this is the most up to date um, Google Classroom, and um, it should be like that in your Google Certified Educator exam as well. So it's broken down into four sections here: get your class organized, assign work more easily, collect assignments effortlessly and give and receive feedback. Um, don't forget to check in the description. You can find links for uh, this PowerPoint, my Google training. Um, you can find uh, Twitter links and things like that. All right, so get your class more organized. Um, okay, keeping track of everyone. Google Classroom is, is, uh, f is best for um, classroom organization, right? You're gonna keep everything organized and it really does work wonders. Uh, teachers can, can, can now control settings by clicking the gear. Okay, that's something new. Um, where they can edit a description, they can change a course code, they can add materials, they can control posting, guardian, uh, uh, guardian summaries, all this thing. So a lot of the stuff you want to find is right there in that gear in uh, Google Classroom. Um, Classroom also integrates with Gmail and Google Drive and um, it has a rich tool set. Now there's something called the people page which is great for communicating, assigning and collecting work as well as providing resources and I'm going to have screenshots of all of these for you. So um, students can access Google Classroom by using the class code. The class code is something you're going to get in the classroom. You're going to, uh, you can write it down on the board for your students, the class code. They log into their Google account. And they just type in Google Classroom. And then all they do is just write, you know, they click join class and they just put that code in. Code is a, the, the class code is the best way to do it. Um, you can also send an invitation. Um, uh, that's another way to do it where the, you send them uh, emails. And if, it's good to have a Google group, a Google group set up or a contacts list set up. Um, you can send specific assignments to individual students instead of the whole class. Um, teachers can promote collaboration and assign work to groups of students. And uh, teachers can share a classroom with a co-teacher. Okay, so if, if you know you have a special education teacher and a general ed education teacher, you could share that classroom, which is, uh, which is great. Um, to prepare your classroom, here's what you do. You simply go to classroom.google.com and then you know, um, this is to create a classroom. You go to classroom.google.com. You don't just type in Google Classroom. You're going to select the plus sign in the top right and then just go to add new class. And I'm going to show you that next. To add students using the class code, which is the way I use it, um, remember the class code is a unique, it's unique to, to each class and I, I think it's the easiest way. Um, you just send your students to Google Classroom, they click join class, and then they enter the code. So right now, let me show you how to create a class. All right, so take a look. I typed in googleclassroom.com and, and, and then I selected it and it took me here. So what I do is I go to this plus, okay, you see the arrow pointing on it in blue, and then I click create class. Okay, once you click create class, if you look down here in the green, all you got to do is enter your basic information. And it's a little, it's a little light where you could see it says class name, section, and subject. So that's how you create a class. Now, if you want to share the, the class code, you can click this gear icon. This is the infamous gear icon I'm talking about. Okay, click the gear, the gear icon. And remember, gear is always uh, settings. One second. Click this gear icon. It'll take you here. And then um, you see right here where it says class code, uh, Y, G, whatever. Um, you could press display if you want to show it to your students, make it really big. And then they'll use this code to, um, you know, to enter the classroom. And they should know how to they should know how to do that because worse comes to worse, I'm sure another teacher showed them how to join classroom by now. All right, so setting up your classroom, um, you can create class rosters with Google Groups. Okay, if your school uses groups, you go to the People page, click the Invite icon for students, and then just send the invite. And I'll show you how to do that next. You can also create a, a classroom roster with contacts. So remember, there's two ways you could do it. You could do it with groups or with contacts. Okay. Um, if you created a, a, a contact group uh, in your classroom, again, you just go to people page, the invite icon, and then you can select the group's name. So let's take a look at that. 
Okay, here we are. This is what it should look like when you're in a class. So I, I already created an SAT prep class. I go into my class and I select people. And from there, I um, you can invite students. You see right here the green. So first I click people, then I click invite students. This green, this green circle shows you that person with the plus sign. And then you just start typing in either a group or an individual, whether it's a contact group or a Google group, and then you'll get some some results will, will pop up once you start typing and then select those and after you pick your group you just press invite and that's it um, setting up your class alright so you can make a roster with sheets if, if you want you collect all your students emails and put it on a Google sheet and then you could use this to contact students so this is one way to use Google sheets right you just collect all the students emails and uh, put it in uh, uh, excuse me you collect all their emails you put their names on one side like one set of a uh, one column of cells, and then another column of cells. You could put their con uh, their contact information, their emails. Um, you can make rosters with contact groups. Okay, I'm gonna show you to do that next. Um, go to Google Contacts, select the contact you want to add by clicking their checkbox. Then you click the Manage label at the top right and create a new group. So let me show you how to do that now. This is a contact group. Remember, contacts are different than Google Groups. Here's contacts. Okay, you're going to see it. It's a little different. Okay, yeah, here's contacts, right? So to create a contact group, first select the email. So you could check a box here. Check a box. Check a box. And then you, um, after you check your box, you select the label at the top right. You see this thing right here? I go to create label because I want to create a group, right? I want to create a group label. Um, press create and then I name it. And then from there you could add people and things like that. There's a couple of uh, label groups over here. Okay, organize your rosters. Um, teach, uh, you can teach a BYOD, stands for bring your own device. And um, students can, uh, they use their own devices and they can access all the classroom materials. So they bring in their laptops and you basically, you know, they can do, you know, all their work on the computer. Um, I added my students by sharing a class code, that's one way. Um, you could use Classroom to empower students to share their questions online. Um, and you can uh, easily send reminders that that's that's great with classroom as well you know if something's due if an assignment's due and coming up you put send reminder and then boom right in their cell phone because most of them have the app on their phone encourage them to get the app on their phone and uh, it'll come right up all right so let's do a lesson check how can students join a class a, a classroom a classroom class a couple ways right they can use the class code and they could accept the teacher's invitation. So you could use the code or you could invite them directly. Remember the class code, you just, you know, you go to settings for the class code. And then um, it should be right there in an invitation. When you go to the people page, you'll see a person with a little plus sign. Click that. Um, using classroom, teachers can do what? They can do a lot of things. They can send assignments, questions, announcements add co-teachers and they could modify online discussions you can even have discussions and um, you can create excuse me you can set permissions with postings if teachers don't have classroom available as their choice but want to communicate at a scale with students what can they do so let's say they don't have classroom and you want to communicate with a large group of students what can we do what are the what are the two that we talked about you could create contact groups to easily send emails and share documents um, It doesn't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back here. Right? It doesn't have a. Sh they didn't select share a group. Um, but um, group Google Groups is another way to communicate. Um, it says communicate at scale with students. I guess they they are encouraging you to use contacts, but you could still communicate with them if you want to do groups. Um, we did a whole section on on, on that, but probably contacts in, in Google Classroom. That's what they want you to focus on here. I mean, it, it is what it is. Okay, with Classroom, you can, what can you do? You can upload class materials. You can assign and collect student work. And you can send announcements to your class. Okay, so upload materials, assign work, collect work, send announcements. Um, you, you, the other one, I'm going to go back real quick. The other one doesn't make any sense, record online classes. All right, so this is good. We're in the second section, right? Assign work easily. So for years, teachers have assigned homework by writing it on the whiteboard, and the students always forget, right? You write the assignment on the whiteboard, they forget. Using Google Classroom, you don't have to rely on your students to copy the work down. 
um, with classroom assign classwork or homework and let the you know through Google classroom you can assign classwork and it's always going to be there for them let students know when their assignments are due you can have you know it'll remind them you can add documents link, links videos so things don't get lost you know just writing the assignment on the board they're always going to forget that um, and maybe they lose a paper maybe you hand out or they weren't there here everything's on classroom it's so organized Easy assignment process. Okay, Classroom allows you to instantly create individual copies of a document. You don't got to go and, and like, like you can create, you, let's say you upload a file, you can send that file or that doc to everybody in the classroom. You don't got to go to the copying machine. Um, and then students can, uh, you know, share them with, with, uh, with others. Um, um, as you manage assignments in your classroom, um, your students will receive an email notification for new assignments that's excellent right so you give them an assignment they're gonna get an email notification and the best thing is they're gonna see upcoming due dates so many times my students have told me oh man I, I just I you know I forgot and I saw your email in classroom and then I remember to do it um, you can also create assignments uh, for your students with Google Drive okay another way to do this is is with shared folders in Google Drive I, I'm gonna show you how to do that and we're gonna talk about that a little bit because it's a little bit different um, with individual folders for each student, um, you can track all of their work in one place. Okay, so um, folders works as well. Um, don't, don't everything's fine. Don't, don't worry about. It. Yeah, it's yeah, it's all right if you it's all, it's all right. Don't worry. Um, ways to assign work. Okay, you can create an assignment in classroom, and then you have the option to uh, copy the assignment to multiple classes. You can add links, videos. Um, assignments to classroom. Um, remember, you could add different types of media. You could have YouTube videos, links. Um, you could add files directly from Drive. I'm going to show you on, on the next slide how, how it works. So e easily add files from Drive and set permissions to edit and view. So let's take a look here, right? This is what we talked about. We said create an assignment in classroom. So links, videos, and uh, files from Drive. So if you want to create an assignment, you got to be in the stream. Okay, that's why it's yellow and you got that blue arrow, right? So to create an assignment from from class, from uh, uh, you got to be in the stream, and then um, you want to go down here to click the plus. You see this plus? Click that plus, and then these four are gonna pop up, and then you're gonna s select this in blue, which says create assignment. Okay, when you click create assignment, here's what's gonna pop up, and then you, what you want to do is you want to name this assignment. I just wrote sample assignment. This is for Google Certified Educator Training. So you'll name assignment, and down here you'll see links, videos, drive. I'm going to get into that next. And then you just click assign. And listen, when you click assign, you can actually um, you can assign. It'll pop up where you can um, you know assign uh, assignments for the future, like oh you know upcoming assignments. So let's take a look at these four here, right? Here's what happens if you collect them. So this one right here is a file. That little paperclip means file. So if you click this, you could go into your computer and you can upload a file. You could do one from your drive. Um, this is the drive icon. So if you click this, it takes you right to your drive and you can just simply select a file there. Here's a, here's a little YouTube symbol. If you click this, it'll take you to YouTube and you can search a video. And if you already have the URL, you put that in. And the last one is a link, right? Just pop the link in right there. So that's what these four are. And um, you'll probably be qu a quiz on this. What are you know some ways to uh, attach assignments and files? So those are your four. Okay, ways to assign work. Okay, um, this is ways to assign work. So, you know, viewing assignments. Classroom, um, Google Classroom allows teachers to see upcoming assignments, and then uh, they can uh, click details for more information. So you know, as you assign work, if you view the assignments, you could see all information about it. I'll show you that coming up. You can share a resource folder in Drive. So if you want to share a bunch of different readings and resources, you create a shared folder and it has all these readings. So let's say you got like 25 readings and you want to put it in a folder so that students can get to this folder and then there's all 25 readings instead of having to go into the classroom and everything, right? Because um, if you post 25 different ones, it'll, it'll be all within the stream and all lost. Whereas if you create a shared folder, think about it you know students will just go to that folder and everything's right in there it's all nice and organized okay so the folder is to keep everything organized um, and I'll show you how to do that um, okay let's say you want to make view only documents for students to copy um, you share a file with the view permission only right and then uh, students can make changes to the copies not the documents
All right, viewing assignments, right? So from the stream, you click on upcoming assignments here, and then you're, you're able to, to, to view them, right? So if I click here, I can view these upcoming assignments. I can click directly on the assignment. And when you do that, here's what you get. You get the student's names, who turned it in, um, what's it assigned, two turned it in, uh, one is assigned. You've actually got the work right here. You could see it says turned in, turned in. It's been assigned, hasn't been turned in. Um, all the information is right here. So you just click on the assignment and you see everything about the students. You don't have to worry about, you know, the old days when you collect assignments and go through and, and see who owes this. And so it's much easier. All right. So to share a folder, right? So first thing you want to do is if you want, let's say that's 25 readings, right? So you, t you find 25 readings, you put them into a folder. Here I have a folder, it's called practice folder. So let's say this has all the readings. What you do first is you click the practice folder. And from there, this thing's going to pop up, that person with the plus sign. That's like the universal share icon. So you click your file first, then this will pop up. This person with the plus won't be there unless you click the practice folder. This pops up, you click this. And then here, you can share with a group. You know, you put the student's name or whatever. You can make a public. Um, up here, you can get a shareable link. But remember, you don't want them to, to you know, change this and, and edit it. So put view only. Okay, don't let them organize it and change the, the work that you did. So put view only. And then they can make a, because it's view only, they can always make a copy of it and edit their own copy. Um, so yeah, th this is how, how do we make view only documents, right? You share a file through a link, view only for your students to make their own copies. So uh, again, like this is just a, uh, this is just a document. It's called Google task write-ups, right? So let's say I want to share this. I click share up here in the red. Okay. Then I choose my view. I just go to can view and you do that by clicking this little icon. You see the eye, the eye means can view. Okay. A uh, comment has like three lines and edit is like a, a, a little pencil, but we did all this in unit four. And probably the best way to do it is, you know, you press can view, but you want to get a shareable link. So click that shareable link and it'll present one for you. Remember, control C will copy it onto your clipboard. Um, when adding a drive document, you have the, the following below. Okay, let's say you want to uh, uh, add a drive document. Here's what you can do. So let's say you're doing it directly from, from drive. It's nice and easy. You can have students can view, students can edit, and or you can make a copy for each student. That's probably that's probably the best one right here. Do a form. Make a copy for each student. All right, so smart assignments for all. This is just a quick review again, right? With Google Classroom, make virtual virtual document copies to distribute to everybody so you don't have to photocopy. No more need to, to uh, you know, make these copies. And the copy machines always break, always. Um, you can see all your assignments in one place keep track of them know when they're due know who turned them in that's the best part uh keep track of actual assignments you can you know they'll be marked and, and then you could review them you could select several classes when assigning a document so maybe you want to assign it to a bunch of different classes and remember create that shared shared folder that resource folder where they can find everything in there all right uh, let's go to lesson check. In classroom, you can add the following to your assignment. What can you add? We know files, we know links, and we know videos. Okay? You can't add different due dates for each student. If I don't want my students to modify a worksheet in a shared folder, I can do what? I can share the folder as view only. They can only see it. When adding a drive document to a classroom assignment, you have the following options. We just talked about this, right? I just went over the three of them. The first one is, why is this not popping up? Students can edit file. Students can make a copy for each student. And students can view. Let me go back. So if students can edit, you can make a copy for each student, or you can have students can view the file. All right. When creating an assignment in Google Classroom, which of the following choices are available? So when you create an assignment, what choices do you have? The first one is attach multiple files. What else? 
copy the assignment to multiple classes. And that's going to take us to unit, uh, excuse me, to section three, which is collect assignments effort, effort, effortlessly. So you want to collect the work easily. I think I'm having a tough internet connection here because I'm trying to move the slides in and they're, they're, they're getting stuck. All right, so turn it in. Students can save time and energy turning in assignments in a digital classroom. It's much easier than the old-fashioned way. Um, Google Classroom, you know, when you use Google Classroom, students can submit assignment just with a click of a button. And they always lose things, kids, anyway, so the click of a button, it, it's much easier. Using Drive, they can easily move documents to shared folders with their teacher. They can create a document. One second. One second. Like 10 minutes. That's all right. Not all right. In order to preserve student paintings, um, for example, we use Google Classroom app on the tablet. That's one way. You can get them to take a picture or a video of their work and then share with the teacher. Remember, you snap the picture with the tablet and it's easily shared. Use Google Classroom to create assignments. Students get, all, students get a notification about the assignment. And when students complete their work, all they do is click the Turn It In button. And this way, students can see how many students uh, turned in their assignments. Okay, using Classroom. Okay, students can submit everything through Google Classroom. Students click the Add. That's a little plus sign uh, on a on a mobile or um, to select a drive file. So what what can they what can they submit? They can submit a drive file, a local file, a URL, a URL link, images, YouTube videos. These are all the things they could submit in a Google Classroom. Students can mark their assignment as done. Okay, they can do it themselves uh, without turning in a document or a URL. They just have to click the mark as done button. So they can even do that themselves. So this is all great for, you know, from the student's end. Drive now, right? The previous, let me go back. This was, we're talking about classroom here. Now we're talking about Drive. Tips and tricks for Drive. Students can uh, create a document and move it into a shared folder. So maybe you want to use the shared folder a lot, right? You say, all right, guys, um, you know, it, it is more organized with, with the shared folder, I think. So um, you create a shared folder and whatever document they do, they just put it into the folder. You know what? You could think, uh, you know, portfolio assessments too. Uh, the files can be accessed by the teacher. In Google Docs, for example, student te students and teachers have the ability to send a message directly to document collaborators, and teachers can review activity and revision history. We're gonna get into this. We're gonna get into this a lot more in Unit 12, with commenting, messaging, um, creating a, a, a sort of like a, on the side they have comments, and and it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You can really see what's going on, but that comes up later. Okay. Here we go. Students must turn in a document in classroom in order to complete the assignment. Um, that's false. They don't have to turn it in in a classroom. I mean, you can, they can turn it in other ways. It's really up to you. So that, that's false. Uh, they have the option to turn it in, but it's not a must. If a teacher creates a shared folder with a student, each file in that folder can what? Can be accessed by the teacher. Okay? Remember, you're creating a shared folder with a student. What's up? Thank you. Thank you. What is this? Teachers can view how many students have turned in their work in classroom. Is that true? Let's see. Absolutely. Um. Again, if you if you go back here, you can go to, to you can just click on the assignment, and it'll have a nice breakdown of who turned in what and and who owes what. Students can turn in these kinds of files. In Google Classroom. So this was the slide. was about six slides ago. What type of files can they turn in? Videos, sheets, Google Docs, and images. They could turn in a lot of different files. Give and receive feedback. All right. This is the last section. With uh, within Google Drive, you can give feedback by commenting or suggesting changes. Class, with Classroom, you can provide feedback throughout the entire life cycle of an assignment. Students have the opportunity to revise work. So you can give them feedback, they revise their work, and then you give them more feedback and they make changes. 
Forms, remember, forms are great for allowing feedback to be submitted anonymously. So Google Forms, always remember, you can, you know, you can use that for anonymous feedback because they don't have to put their names. You can just, you know, you can just have it that they don't put their emails. Sharing feedback is caring. So sharing is caring. Google Classroom Assignments, uh, after they submit work in Classroom, click the grade section to enter the number grade or leave feedback through direct comments. The comments stream, okay? Uh, in a Google Doc, you can select the text that you want to leave feedback on. So what you do is you underline the text, you highlight it, and then a little button will pop. You click that, and that allows, allows you to give a comment right on right on that uh, selected text. And again, all this actually goes over in, in Unit 12. So don't worry about it if, if you're not getting it here. We're going to get into detail. It might seem a little confusing, but in Unit 12, we go over this in detail, and you'll master it. A resolve button is provided to clear comments. So if you create a comment and you want it, want it to be done with, always just, just press the resolve button. And uh, let me just go back to this because I feel like I rushed it. Google Classroom Assignments. Um, remember, students can submit their work in Classroom. And then you could click on the grade section. It's so easy to enter a grade. We're going to get to that next. All right, so to enter a grade, first click on the assignment. So let's say I'm clicking on this assignment, assignment, math word problems. I click on this assignment here. And here's and, and here comes up with a student. They turn in the assignment. And I just enter a grade right into the section. Uh, commenting in docs, right? So let's say you're looking at a student's uh, document. Uh, what can you do? You you highlight, you know, you highlight some of the text, and then you can click this red button here. I mean, you can click this plus button. That's one way to do it. The other way is just go to insert and just comment, okay? But if you want to specifically write about about some some text, you under you highlight it. Like you can see, it's a little bit highlighted here, and then this thing will pop up, and you click that. But you could also you could also insert and then comment. All right. Uh, sharing feedback and caring. Uh, suggested edits. People with common level access to a doc are automatically limited to the suggested suggesting mode. So if you want to put comment level access, that's one way to um, sort of control what's going on. Changes, suggestions, and additions are tracked, color-coded, and labeled for everybody to see. So that just suggested edits. Um, feedback forms. Use a Google form to collect peer feedback. Remember, it could always be anonymous. Google forms, you can make it anonymous. You can decide if you want the form to identify your student by requiring a sign-in. So if you want it not to be anonymous, you make them sign in. If you want it to be anonymous, you, you just don't make them sign in. You can share a document with common access. How do you do that? Take a look. Again, just go to the share right on the top. Can comment. And look what the comment looks like. It looks like a, like a little a word bubble with three lines. Very easy. Create learning conversations. So it says workflows in Google Classroom are very smooth, right? It's it's streamlined, all right? So if you're taking this test, a lot of words, they, they like to say Google Classroom streamlines the, the learning experience, right? So it's smooth. Everything is streamlined. In Docs, remember, Docs are great because it's great for collaboration. And you can comment, reply, talk to each other. And honest feedback is found with forms. So forms are for feedback and anonymous here. So I'm just going to review this slide real quick. Google Classroom, right? It's streamlined. It's, it's a streamlined uh, uh, teaching experience. Everything's smooth. Collect resources. See everything that's going on. Docs is good for communicating, leaving comments, resolving them. And one more time, forms is for what? Collecting information. And um, you can have it anonymous as well. All right, lesson check. Once students turn in... Once students turn in their assignments in classroom, teachers cannot provide further feedback. Is that true? No, that's false. You can, I mean, listen, you can go right up to the student yourself and give them feedback. It's not a rule, right? These tools help teachers give feedback to students. What tools help give feedback? We well, you know forms. You can, um, you can give, uh, help give feedback to students. Um, and docs as well, okay? And classroom. So it's all three of them. Classroom, you can, you know, this goes back to our previous slide here. If you go down here, learning conversations, right? These are the conversations, classroom, docs, and forms. So you got forms, docs, and classroom. Okay, forms used in G Suite for Education can't remain anonymous. Notice the word can't. That's false, right? You can make it anonymous. 
two ways to provide feedback in docs. What are the two ways? What do we talk about here? We mentioned comments and the other one, suggested edits. All right, so unit seven check. Excuse me. All right, well, one way to use Google Classroom to flip your classroom is by what? All right, sharing videos. Whenever you hear flip the classroom, what do you think? Sharing videos and readings. And remember, a flipped classroom is not just all videos. It's just getting content out kind of as homework. Um, a teacher wants her students to provide honest but constructive feedback to their peers regarding their performance in a theater production. If this was her goal, why would the teacher have unchecked some of the form settings? So why would she have unchecked? Take a look at the settings here. See, uncheck these. Why did she do that? So responses are kept anonymous. Okay, that here it says require my school login so students don't have to give their email address. So now they know it's anonymous. And they can be more honest, okay? Because if they have their name on it, they might, you know, they they might not be honest. If they know it's it's attached to them. Okay, true, false. For each assignment in Google Classroom, students must attach a file or link in order for the assignment to be done. Is that true? Do they have to attach a file or a link for assignment to be done? Do they have to do that? Of course not. They can, you know, there's other ways. You know, they they have the option to to mark it done. I mean, it, it, let me go back right here. I mean, the assignment you said could have just been, you know, read chapter six and then they can mark it as done. So it, they don't always have to submit a link or a file. If you want to advise, if you want to advise simple changes to student work, like adding a comma directly on the document, you take advantage of which feature in Docs? Suggested edits. Okay. So it says, um, let me read this a question one more time because I'm rushing here. If you want to advise simple changes to student work, such as adding a comma, but you don't want to directly edit the document, okay, what should you use? Suggested edits. A fellow science teacher wants to start using Classroom, but is worried she will need to post information five times because she teaches five sections of the class. Um, what do you recommend cl clicking on? All right, take a look, okay? Number one here, that, that's this thing, Mathematics Part 1. Um... Remember, she's teaching what? She, she, it says here, five times she teaches five sections. So if you click this here, it's going to open up and you can select all the sections. So maybe she's teaching algebra f to five different classes and you got section one, two, three, four, five. You click this little thing right here, the one, and it'll pop up. You want to add students to your classroom class. If you cannot send them an email invitation because Gmail is disabled, how do you enroll them? So you can't send them an email. You want to add your students. What do you do? The class code, right? That's what we said. That's what I love using. The class code is, is, is an easy way. I think it's the easiest way. All right. That's it for Unit 7. Uh, the next unit, Unit 8, uh, is, is uh, probably the most difficult one. So you really want to watch that one. Watch it. I've got uh, videos in Unit 8. You're not going to see it on, on this type of... Uh, you're not going to see it on, on, on this type of video, but you got to go into YouTube to find the other ones. Now, if you want to get the PowerPoint, click the link below, and you'll be able to get the PowerPoint. Also, you could uh, find other links to Twitter, for, uh, to my Twitter and things like that. Like, I'll put some some Google Certified Educator questions on Twitter and, and uh, some, some other type of, like, sometimes I'll, I'll put, like, you know, screenshots and things like this to, to remind people for the Google Certified Trainer test.